Hello there and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and publish an Android library to Maven Local with Gradle. And I'm also going to show you how to consume this library after it has been published. So we're going to start by creating a project. I'm just going to select the empty activity because we don't care about the application itself. There's nothing special over here. We're going to name it publication test. Okay, we're going to use Kotlin as our language. So in order to publish an Android library, we first need to create it. So the library will simply be a separate module inside our project. Every project starts with this app module, but we're not going to touch it. So we're going to go to file, new, new module. And over here, we're going to select Android library and we're going to give it a name my toolbox. Of course, you can name it whatever you want. We're going to use Kotlin and we're going to leave things as they are. And then we're going to finish. So now we can see that this new module was created, my toolbox, and inside we have the same structure like inside the app. We have our Java and we have our com and the name of our group. And we also have the name of the library. So also this module will have its own separate build Gradle file. So you can see we have the regular project build Gradle, we have the app build Gradle, but now we also have this new My Toolbox build Gradle. And we're going to use this build Gradle in order to publish our library. Now, in order to check if our library is actually published well and working, we need to have some content inside, okay? So I'm going to create some kind of file that will contain extensions and then we're going to be able to use these extensions when we consume the library. So I'm going to name it extensions and inside I'm simply going to paste some extensions that I have. So I pasted just a couple of utility extensions. And if you don't know what extensions are, you can check my video about it. I placed it in the description of this video, but it's basically methods that we define in a separate file and then we can use it in our entire project, okay? But now when we create these extensions inside this library, we're going to be able to bring it to every project by simply consuming the library. So it's something useful that you can do as well. And the reason I named them with TBX, it just stands for the toolbox or toolbox. So each time I want to search for one of these extensions, I can start typing TBX, okay? Now, just because we have these extensions over here, we still cannot use it inside our app, for example, because our app module and our toolbox module are separate modules. So even if we have this over here, and even if these are extensions, we cannot use it in this app because it's considered a different project. Okay, so just to demonstrate, if I go into the main activity of the app, and then for example, I want to use this extension, right? It's simply an extension that takes a double and then rounds up or down. So it only gets two numbers after the point, right? So over here, if I'm going to create some kind of double and then I try to reach that extension, TB, you can see there is no extension to be found. So this module is not connected to this app right now. So the way to use it inside this app or any other app is by consuming it from the place it was published to. So we can publish our library locally, like we're going to do today, but we can also publish the library remotely online to different repositories, and then everyone can use them and not only you, because if we publish it locally, then only if we're on this computer, only then we can use these libraries, okay? But there is another way that we can test this library inside this app, okay? So we don't have to publish this library yet. First of all, we just want to see if the code is working, right? We just want to see that everything is working. So we want to be able to access this module inside this app project. So there's actually two ways to do it. 
First of all, we can go to File, Project Structure, and over here we can go to Dependencies, and then we select our App Module, and we simply add a new dependency, and we select Module Dependency, and then we select this My Toolbox Library, okay? Then we press on OK, Apply, and now our app is aware of this module, okay? And if we're going to try to find these extensions right now, we're going to be able to find them. So the thing that happened is if we go into the build gradle of our app, we can see that this line of code was added, okay? So implementation, project, path, my toolbox. So this is also the second way, and I think the easier way to make this happen. So we don't have to always go into project structure, we can simply write this line of code over here inside the build gradle of the app and then specify the name of the module. So if we're going to have another module, we can do it again, and then it's going to connect this module to this module, okay? So it's basically creates a dependency. So this library becomes a dependency of this app and now it can access it the same way we can access other libraries and the same way we're going to be able to access our library after we publish it so now if we go to the main activity and we try to extend this double and we type tbx we can see that there is access to these extensions okay so now we know that our library is working but we can only reference it inside this app, inside the same project, okay? And that's not useful. We want to be able to use these extensions in every project that we create. So in order to be able to use it in every project that we create, we need to publish our library. For now, we're going to publish it locally to Maven Local. So Maven Local is simply a local repository that is inside a folder on our computer. And it means that every project that we create on this computer will be able to access this library, okay? If you want to share this library with friends or with other people, or basically just to make it public to the world, you need to publish it to a remote repository. So I'm going to have different videos about how to publish to remote repositories because it takes a bit more steps to do it but today we're going to publish it locally and we're going to consume this library from a different project okay so in order to publish our library we need to write some scripts inside our gradle okay so the gradle is responsible for the different builds for publishing for bringing all kinds of dependencies and because we want to publish my toolbox, right? We don't want to publish this entire project. We don't want to publish our app. We just want to publish this module, right? We want to publish the code that is inside of our module. We need to go to the build gradle of our toolbox, right? Of our library. So over here, we're going to paste some code that will take care of the publication. Of course, we also get these default settings that we can change if we want something specific from our library but if you don't care about all of these then you don't need to touch them and we're going to deal with this code okay so over here we have this after evaluate block and this block will simply find all the different library variants and it will create a publication for each one of them okay so when this block runs it will create an AAR file. And AAR stands for Android Archive, okay? And the difference between AAR and JAR is that JAR is Java Archive, okay? And we want to create an AAR because this library is an Android library. And if you don't know what the difference between an Android library and a Java library is that a Java library can contain only Java classes, Java files, but an Android library can also contain different resources, drawables, layouts. So sometimes it's useful, especially when we need to use them inside our library, right, for the functionality. And other times we want to create just a simple Java library because 
we don't know if the consumer will even be an Android project, okay? So over here, it's going to create an AAR file and then it's going to publish it to Maven Local. And the reason it's going to publish it to Maven Local, even though we did not specify it over here, is because it's a Maven publication and this Maven publication and this entire block was possible because we are using this Maven Publish plugin, okay? So because we use this Maven Publish plugin on our entire project, we can also use all of this and we can create a publication and then it's going to publish it into Maven Local. So another thing that we're doing over here is creating both of these jars. And these jars are simply optional, okay? If you want to have Java Docs in your library, if you want the consumer to be able to read the Java docs that you have inside your library. If you don't care about that, then you don't need to add these. So you can just comment them out or delete them. And then you can also delete all of these tasks because these tasks simply create these jars, okay? So when we specify that we want to create these jars, it will create an AAR and two jars. So these jars will be created by these tasks. So we have this Android Java Docs task and it simply does different things. It configures the Java Docs and then we have this task that is dependent on this task, okay? So this one will not run, it will not complete until this one is done. So after all of these configurations are going to be done, this one will run and then it will create a jar with the Java Docs. And we also have a task that will create a jar for the sources. Okay, but if you don't care about that, you can simply skip this part. Then we have all of this information and this is just for the identification of our library. Because when we're going to consume the library, we need to give it a name, okay? We need to provide it a name to be able to find it, right? So like we always do these implementations and then we look for some kind of library. So this is exactly what is going on. We have the group ID, we have the artifact ID, and we have the version. So over here, I'm going to give the name of your artifact. I'm going to give it some kind of my toolbox, okay? And we can also paste it over here. We can also get rid of this. It doesn't matter but we're going to leave it this way because usually we have com Google Android material and then again material, okay? So this part will go over here. This part will go over here and this part will go over here. So it's going to be relevant when we are going to consume the library, but first we want to publish it. So this block will publish our library. And the way to actually publish their library is to run a task, a Gradle task that will publish the library, okay? And we have different Gradle tasks, okay? And the way to see them is to go over here to the right. And if you don't see all of these tasks over here, then what you need to do is go to File, Settings, select experimental and disable this do not build Gradle task list during Gradle sync, okay? Just disable this, apply, and then sync project with Gradle files, okay? And then it's going to create all of these tasks. So now we want to find the publishing task for this library, okay? And we can see that we have our library over here. We don't care about the general tasks, we don't care about the app, right? We care about our library. So we're going to expand this and inside we can see all the tasks separated into different categories. So we care about publishing and inside we have different publishing tasks. So we want to publish to Maven Local, okay? So before we publish to Maven Local, I want to show you where inside your computer, you're going to find this library, okay? Where it's going to get published. So on Windows, you can find it under users, okay? Your main drive, users, and the name of your user. And inside, you can find this 
M2 folder, okay? So it's going to create the library, it's going to publish it over here. So over here inside the repository, we can see that we don't have our library, we have some kind of default JetBrains things, we don't care about that, but we don't see our library. So now when we're going to publish our library, it's going to appear over there. And then we're going to be able to consume it from a different project, okay? So this is the location of the repository locally on our computer, okay? On the Mac, you simply need to go to your finder, find your home folder, and then again, you need to find your user, and inside you're going to find the same M2 folder, okay? Maybe you're not going to see this folder because it's a hidden file, so you need to press Command, Shift, and Dot, and then it's going to reveal all the hidden folders, and then you can find this M2 folder. So now we're going to go back over here, and we're going to publish to Maven Local, okay? We simply double click on this. It's going to run different tasks. So I have some kind of problem with the generation of the Java doc. And if we go over here, we can see that it's because we're using this Kotlin file, okay? So Java docs are not really working with Kotlin files, right? We cannot create Java docs for Kotlin files. So it's really unnecessary to produce them this time. So I'm going to comment them out. But if you're going to have Java files and you want to use Java docs, then you can create these jars, okay? So I just don't care about that and it's not going to work with my Kotlin file. So now I'm going to sync again and I'm going to publish again. And now we can see that it's successful. So now we can also go to the location of the local repository and inside the M2 folder repository, we can see that now we also have this com tutorial and the name of our library. And inside we have the version. We don't see both of the jars because I disabled them, but we have this AAR over here and this is the library, okay? This file contains all of our code, okay? And we don't have much code, we only have this extensions file. So now that we publish this library over here, we want to be able to consume it, okay? So in order to really consume it, we need to create a new project and then try to consume it from a different project because over here we already used it right inside the app. So now we're going to create a new project. Let's call it consumer test. And to be able to consume our library, we need to go to the build gradle, okay? Well, first we go to the settings gradle, okay? And over here we need to specify that we want to use Maven local as one of the repositories, okay? So Maven local, we simply specify that we want to use a local repository that is called Maven local. And then we go to the build gradle of our app and inside we need to implement this library the same way we implement it when we bring it from remote sources, okay? So we're going to type implementation and the name of our library, okay? So we can go back to the publication, to the Gradle script, and we have all of this information over here. So we can create a string, this, and then this, and then this, and we're going to copy all of this, go back over here, and paste it inside this implementation, and then we can sync the Gradle, okay? So if you really want to be sure that you're actually consume this library before you even try it out in the code, you can go to the project view over here. Instead of Android, you go to project, and then you have this external libraries, okay? So you expand this, and then you try to find your libraries. So it starts with com tutorial, so let's find it. 
So we can see it over here, com tutorial, and this is our library, and we can see that it's an AAR. We can also go to the app itself and try to use the library, okay? So if we had different classes and different files, we would simply use the file, right? For example, user, and then it would bring this file from the library. We probably should also do import, but in our case, we only have extensions inside the library. So we're going to do the same test, tbx, and we can see that we have access to these extensions, okay? So we don't have this code inside our project, right? This project is empty. We only have this main activity, but we have access now to our library and it's not really useful when it's just a bunch of extensions, but think of it if we have a lot of different classes and a lot of functionality, then we really don't want to bring it to every project, we want to be able to use it by consuming the library, okay? So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed and see you next time.